Hello everybody, Dom Lewis here. As you guys know, I've been coaching for a very long time. I've already done a few tutorials. This one will be one that a lot of you guys have waited for. Now that will be the sitting back handspring. Now, contrary to popular belief, I was not the first person to do it. Um, the, the first person that I know of to do it, especially on video, was a cheerleader named Brian Carter. So I've always given credit where it's due. Um, I was just the first to popularize it by doing all kinds of crazy stuff out of it. Um, so pretty much I was like the second to do it that we know of. Uh, the Dom Bomb is a sitting backflip, and that is something I was the first to do, and that's why it's named after me, but that's for a different time. <laughs> Now, for the sitting back handspring, it will be super, super, super important for you to obviously have the prerequisite of being able to do a back handspring, uh, because if you're gonna try it from sitting down, you better be able to do it from standing up. Now, as I said before, a back handspring is one of the most important things you're gonna need before doing the skill. So if you don't already know how to do one, I do have a tutorial on how to do that, and you can click on the link right here. Um, that'll help you out a bit before trying something like this, but again, make sure you have a very, very good, solid, strong back handspring before attempting the sitting handspring because it, it might not go the way you think it will. <laughs> other things other than just a regular back handspring that you will need is some very good core and back flexibility as well as a lot of arm strength because this is a skill where if you're starting from sitting down, you're gonna be very low to the ground, you're taking all of your body weight onto your arms. So of course you need the strong arms, strong shoulders, but also you really need to focus on making sure that you can bend really well. So having good core and back flexibility in order to land onto your hands from sitting and then snap your feet down. There are some very obvious, uh, super simple stretches that you can do to stretch out your core and your back and all that, like bridges where you're just like, you know, onto your hands, holding a bridge position, uh, the seal stretch where you lay down on your stomach and push, uh, also to help stretch out your back. You can lean and just do like a normal standing pike stretch and that'll help stretch out your back muscles there. So now you're stretching the front and the back side and that will help you a lot for this sitting handspring. Now, when first learning a sitting back handspring, there are certain ways that some people do it. Some people will try it on uh, tumble track and air track. Spring floor is where I first learned it. Um, some people will even try it on grass first, which kudos to them. That's awesome because that's a super difficult spot to do it. But wherever you choose to do it, um, just make sure that you're comfortable on that surface. I would not suggest doing it on like hardwood or concrete because you may bump your head. Now, there are a few ways that people first learn how to do this. Um, some people do a little bit of a hop into it. Um, some people will do that on like a rod floor or a tumble track, air track. Obviously, it's a little bit easier to do that sort of hopping motion than on a spring floor. Some people will stand up and drop down onto their butt into it first. Um, that seems to help some people. You guys have probably seen Tanner Witt do it that way where he stands up, drops down, and then that's how he's achieved the Dom Bomb also is doing that sitting back flip from standing, dropping down onto his butt. So a few different ways you can start to learn how to do this before you actually try to do it stationary, sitting down. Now, when I'm doing a sitting back handspring, my goal is to try to keep my legs as straight as I can, especially in the beginning of it. Uh, once I'm onto my hands, you know, things change a little bit. 
but from the original position of sitting, I try to keep my legs straight out in front of me. Um, I do plunk my toes and that's not just to make it look pretty. Uh, it does help out a bit because when my feet are flexed or something like this, it uh, pulls a lot more on your calves, a lot more on your hamstrings and it makes it hurt a bit. So I do start more pointed so that I can properly lift and then I end up onto my heels a bit. So the way I do that is from sitting position, when I lean forward, I bring my arms back really far because that's gonna help me drive my arms up for momentum. So I lean forward, arms go back far, and then as I throw my arms up, arms go up really fast, my chest is opening, and as I'm doing that, I'm trying to get onto my heels by lifting my hips. So that's where you're getting engaged with the core, uh, with your back. And so, again, here, lift, and then from that position is when I drive my hips up and go into this position. Now, again, it is something pretty difficult to first start trying, so just be careful, but again, Lean forward, aggressively throwing those arms up, chest up, opening the hips, so it'll be kind of, you'll see how you can kind of hop off the floor a little bit. Boom. Boom. Said, uh, it is important, at least for me, to try to keep my legs straight when I start. Now, one thing I do that breaks away from the traditional back handspring mold is, as I do the sitting handspring, I do bend my arms a bit. Um, again, obviously you need the arm strength to back that up because all of your body weight is going onto your hands. So I do bend my arms a bit just because it is very difficult to, to bounce and get high enough into the air where you can keep your arms straight. And I do have abnormally long arms for my height. So mine are a little bit bent because for me to go from here onto my arms with straight arms, it's kind of difficult, but it's not impossible. So why fix what's not broken? Um, might as well just keep trying to bend my arms a little bit because going to here will be quite a hike. Okay, combining all of those things that I just told you, I will show you a sitting handspring. Now that I've broken it down quite a bit um, and you've seen it now, me doing the skill, slow, fast, however it's done. Um, there is no specific way to do it. Um, obviously there are certain tips and tricks that will help you with it, but however you do it, as long as you accomplish the skill, you got it. Um, there are a lot of people you can watch do the skill, aside from myself. Um, Austin Ray is a good example, Nidal, uh, Tanner Witt. There are a lot of people out there that do it now and you can see we're all different body styles, all completely different types of people and we all still accomplish the skill and it looks a little bit different when each of us do it. So as long as you're following those tips and tricks that I gave you, working on your arm strength, uh, the flexibility in your core, in your back, uh, making sure your shoulders are nice and strong as well. Um, make sure you're giving this a try. Be safe with it. Try it on a tumble track, air track, wherever you got to try it first and then enjoy that I know you guys have been waiting for for a while there are others that I've done on my channel um, and if there are any things that you guys want to see specifically from me whatever you want me to do a tutorial on you can leave a comment uh, send me a DM and I'll be sure to check those out and hopefully get to doing some more tutorials for you